What's up East High School? How you doing? This is Armando Somoza, your College and Financial Aid Advisor with the Denver Scholarship Foundation. We're located here in the East Future Center, room 223. Welcome. We're going to go over uh, an important process in your college application process. We want to make sure that uh, you know how the college application and the financial aid process come together, right? How it all connects and how you eventually make your decision as to where you're going to school. Okay, so uh, welcome. We hope you enjoy uh, the little video here. All right, first and foremost, we need to go over some bullet points to make sure you know how this all functions, right? Some key details to make sure that, that you know what's going on. So number one, very first step in this entire process, right? You got to apply to college, right? It's kind of a key detail when you're getting ready to go off to college. You got to at least apply to college, right? The second most important part right here is that you have to meet all the deadlines. Okay? You have to meet all the deadlines for your college application and for the financial aid process. I can't stress how important that is. If you miss one deadline, you're not going to be considered for anything whatsoever. You've lost your opportunity. That's it. That's over. So if you have a planner, if you have something, make sure you keep track of all your deadlines. You bring, it, you, you, you bring that all together. Okay? The third part here is that especially after you apply to college, when you start the financial aid process, you have to collect your most recent tax forms, okay? Including your and your parents' tax forms. So um, when you get your, your, your taxes prepared, you send them to somebody, whether it's H&R Block or a tax person, you get a form that's called your 1040 or a 1040A or 1040EZ. You want to make sure to collect all those before you start the financial aid process because that really makes the whole process a lot, a lot faster and a lot easier, okay? Next part right here is that you got to complete and submit your FAFSA, okay? FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid, all right? It's an online form. You don't want to do the paper form. You want to do the online form. It gets processed a lot faster. Um, if you have any mistakes, it tells you right there on the spot. If you have any mistakes, that way it doesn't, there's no lag time. Um, and make sure, very important key detail, the website for FAFSA is www. FAFSA, F A F S A, dot E D dot gov. Okay, that's a really important detail here. If you end up going to FAFSA.com, they charge you to fill out the FAFSA. And what does FAFSA stand for again, right? Free application for federal student aid. You shouldn't have to pay anybody whatsoever. Make sure that you look out in, uh, in February and March. We'll be having financial aid nights here at the school. Okay, so make sure you look out for that. Um, that'll definitely help you out. Okay, the next step here is that the government processes your information. So once you fill out the FAFSA, it's using your tax forms and everything. So what the government actually does is process that all, all, all of that information and they develop what's called a SAR, an S-A-R, your student aid report, okay? Um, this is pretty much an overview of all your FAFSA information. It's like a summary, right? So they actually send it to all the colleges that you apply to. Um, so this is how they find out, you know, your general kind of, uh, your, your financial information and they're able to determine how much financial aid they're able to give you. So after um, the school receives uh, your SAR, your student aid report, the school is going to process that information and they're going to return to you what's called an award letter, okay? On this award letter, this award letter is going to contain all your financial aid, scholarships, grants, anything that the school is going to be offering you at that point. Okay, and that's based on your student aid report. Um, after that, you put all those award letters side by side and you choose uh, what, what school you're going to at that point. All right? So again, we're going to go over this whole process. We just want to make sure to define uh, these bullet points, the really important bullet points. Make sure they're, they're clear. You know how that functions. All right? So in terms of the process, when you're applying to college, what does it begin with? Obviously, the student. Right? So it starts with the student. You start to choose, you know, what schools you're interested in, you, what schools you want to apply to. Let's say for the purposes of this video, we have four schools. Schools A, B, C, and D. This could be in-state schools, out-of-state schools. Uh, it could be really whatever school. Two-year institutions, four-year institutions, private schools, whatever you want. Four schools, all right? Um, you apply to these four schools. Now, the best case scenario, what you want to try to do is apply by Thanksgiving. Okay, if you Alright, so then again, the, the number one thing that you want to do is that once you figure out what schools you're going to apply to, 
The best case scenario is for you to apply by Thanksgiving. Okay, it's an easy way to think about it. Be like, thank goodness I finished all my college applications, all right? Kind of cheesy, but it's going to help you in terms of your deadline. A lot of the school's deadlines are going to be after Thanksgiving, but if you get them done by Thanksgiving, it really helps with how everything falls together for the rest of the school year, right? In terms of financial aid, scholarships, and how that all comes together, okay? So again, you want to apply to all your schools. In the best case scenario, you want to apply to all your schools by Thanksgiving, all right? The next step is that once you apply to your schools, they're obviously going to get back to you with a decision, okay? Now, this is going to be in form of your uh, admissions letter, okay? So your admissions decision is going to be in a letter. And at that point, you receive the letter. The letter is going to say, congratulations, you've been accepted, or unfortunately, we regret to inform you, but you have not been accepted, all right? And that's just the reality of the situation. So let's say, again, for the purposes of this video, right, you have your four schools that you apply to, schools A, B, and C, let's say they accepted you, school D, they wrote you back and they said, you know, sorry, we, we appreciate your application, but unfortunately you haven't been accepted at this point. So, oh well, you brush that off and you continue forward with the three options, okay? So that's why you want to have a good spectrum of schools that you apply to, okay? What's really important, actually, going back to your, your college application process, you want to make sure that you have a, a spectrum of schools. You want to break the schools into three categories, okay? You want to spread them, break them into uh, your safety schools, those are schools that you know, no matter what, you're going to be accepted into. You have your on-target schools, which are schools that, you know, they match up pretty well in terms of your profile, your grades, your test scores, your GPA, your extracurricular activities. You know, they match up pretty well with your profile. So you're, you have your on-target schools. And then the last one is your reach schools. It's those schools that you're like, man, you know, I don't know if I can get into the school, but you know what? I'm going to give it my best shot. And we'll see. We'll see what happens, you know? Okay? So, again, you want to have that spectrum. Again, reach school, on-target school, safety school, all right? So, let's say, again, for the purposes of this video, D was one of those reach schools, right? So, then you didn't get in, but it's okay. You have three other schools that you were accepted into, all right? So, then you're pretty much done with the college application process. Now, if you apply by Thanksgiving, usually these schools are going to get back to you around winter break. So, while you're on vacation, you come back in early January, the schools are going to start to get a hold of you at that point. You're going to start receiving those letters. So that's kind of nice. You find out real early. You don't have to wait all the way to the end of the school year to see what schools you've been accepted to, all right? So then the next step in everything is the FAFSA, all right? Now, a lot of people get really scared about this FAFSA, but it's not too bad. Again, look out in February and March. We're going to be having FAFSA nights here at the school. 